Here, our primary objective is to generate heat, and I have explored several methods to achieve this. One interesting approach that caught my eye is the hairdryer. At its core, a hairdryer operates on a straightforward principle. It houses heating coils through which air, propelled by a fan, is forced. This process effectively warms the air before it's blown out, providing the heat we're interested in. Following this inspiration, I decided to implement this heating method. I started with a basic sketch of the design, featuring a dual-layer heating element at its core. Below this, I positioned a 12 cm width and 12 cm long cooling fan, while the top part of the design houses all the necessary electronics, arranged in a unique shape. Included in these electronics is a display to monitor both the airflow and ambient temperatures. As its special shape, we can release our heated airflow to environment efficiently. Let's design this. I used Fusion 360 for this job. After spending several hours and adding all necessary features, I came up with this design. All right, let's move on to printing them. I used some tips to reduce the printing time. These tips are applied using the Cura Slicer. If you want to learn how to do them, watch this video. Make sure to insert the nut into the middle part while it's printing. Then, before sealing the holes, ensure you remove any support structure from them. After a total of 28 hours, I printed all the parts. Then, I had to perform some finishing operations to achieve the final appearance. First, we need to fix the cooling fan to the bottom part. For it, insert M3 brass hot melt insert nuts into the holes in the bottom part. Next, secure the cooling fan to the bottom part using M3 nuts. Make sure to fix it according to airflow direction. I used a hot plate coil as the heating element. How do heating coils work? We know that when current flows through a resistor, heat is generated. Heating coil operates in the same way as a resistor. It has resistance throughout the coil. And when current flows through it, heat is generated just like through any resistor. Now let's move on to configuring our coil. After some trial and error, I decided on this setup. To ensure safety, I powered the coil with a 12 volts DC supply instead of 110 volts AC. I chose a three ohms coil, which allows four ampere of current to flow through according to Ohm's law. By connecting four coils in parallel, the total current passing through the coils is 16 ampere. This can also be understood in another way. When four, three ohms resistors are connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance is 0.75 ohms. Therefore, connecting this to a 12 volt supply results in a current flow of 16 ampere. I utilize two such parallel configurations, meaning the power supply should provide a total of 32 amperes. Now, Let's prepare the coil. First, unroll the coil that I mean increase the gap between each circle. We need a total length that gives us three ohms of resistance. Use a multimeter to measure this resistance and then cut the coil at the correct length. Now prepare the both ends like this which we'll use to connect the four coils together.
According to this, create eight coils. Now, we need to attach these coils to the middle part. However, we can't connect them directly to the middle part's body because the ends of the heating coils will become hot and could melt the 3D model. To do this job, proper solution is fix the coils through heat resistance plastics. That's why I'm using Bowden tubes, filament pipes from 3D printers, which are designed to withstand high temperatures without melting. You can see they don't melt under high temperatures. Now let's attach them to the middle part. Cut the pipe into five millimeter small pieces and secure them to the holes in the middle part with super glue. Now insert the coils ends into the prepared holes. Take copper wire with a one square millimeters cross-sectional area. Measure the needed length and bend it as shown. Insert the coils ends between the wire pair and bend the end of the heating coils by 90 degrees. Now solder the copper wire securely. According to this way, make the other end also. Finally, I made two layer heating coil system like this. Now fix the middle part with the bottom part. For it, attach M3 brass hot melt insert nuts to the top holes of the cooling fan. Then insert M3 nut to ensure proper fixing. Cut four pieces of an M6 threaded bar, each 13 centimeters long. Now fix them with the middle part like this. Now insert nuts into the threaded bar and keep them in same level. Now take the top part. We need to add an extra layer to this surface because the hot air hitting it could heat the surface continuously, potentially melting the model. Therefore, take an aluminum plate cut it into the appropriate shape and bend them through the parting line as given in the figure. Then affix them to the surfaces using double-sided tape. The double-sided tape will act as a heat insulator between them. After paste heat insulating tape through the edges. Attach the top part on the four threaded bars and secure it by adding nuts on the top side. Make sure to keep the major hole of the top part and middle part's wire hole in same side.
Next, let's tackle the wiring. First, route the main power wire into the top part. Then, bring the heating coil wires into the top part as well. We need to install the circuit boards inside the top part, but before doing that, create holes in the support columns for the nuts using a hot iron rod. After this preparation, secure the Arduino Nano with screws. Take two DHT11 sensor modules. Remove output pins from the modules. Remove the cover of one DHT11 sensor and place it in the airflow. Then take SSD1306 OLED display, some wires and female headers. Make the circuit give in the figure. Don't directly solder OLED display to Arduino Nano. Use female headers to make the OLED removable. Now upload the code. Code is given in the video description. Install the current controller board. As the Arduino Nano, make the holes on the columns to fix the circuit. Then, attach the switches, potentiometer, and OLED display to the lid of the top part. When fixing the switches, decrease the length of the legs by cutting. Insert the M2 brass hot melt insert nuts into the top part. Now, complete the circuit. The circuit diagram is provided in the figure. Ensure you use wires of the proper thickness for each specific task. This is crucial because when we power the heating coils, a total of 32 amperes flows through the main supply wires. Therefore, use wires of the appropriate thickness, such as 65 forward slash 0.30 copper auto wire. I have labeled the suitable wire thickness that you should include in the circuit diagram. Finally, secure the entire assembly to the top part using M2 nuts. We need to power our mobile furnace. For this, I've chosen a 12 volts 40 amperes SMPS power supply. Power on switch of the system. Power on the bottom coil. Power on the top coil. You can obtain your preferred temperature by rotating this knob. We can achieve a temperature approximately 15 degrees Celsius higher than the ambient temperature.
top coil temperature. Bottom coil temperature. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also, like and follow my social networks. It will encourage me to create more interesting content.